All right, me and my girlfriend just came from seeing Godzilla X Kong last night, and I thought it was a pretty solid movie. Um, we're going to do a non-spoiler section first, and then I'll put a time step in the description for the spoiler section. But starting off, I do want to say that that intro with Godzilla was so good. The movie primarily focuses on Kong, but the intro with Godzilla, I don't know if you remember or not. When he like, smashed the wolves and stuff? No, I'm, yeah, I'm talking about... No, that was Kong. I'm talking about Godzilla. No, I don't remember. Okay, well, <laughs> it, either way, the intro is insane. I also want to say that Godzilla is also unhinged this entire movie. Okay, off the bat, I can say one thing I appreciate about this movie is there's way more monster stuff. I think it's split even, actually, between the humans and the monster stuff. And uh, monster stuff is obviously what you're going to be here to see this movie for. The human stuff is actually pretty bad. At first I thought it was decent and then the more I thought about it and everybody talked about it, <laughs> no, the human stuff was actually pretty terrible. It might be the worst. I think the human story was the best in the very first Godzilla where you got that first person view of the human's interaction. And then ever since then, it kind of just went downhill from there. Yeah, the humans and stuff, are, they're really just there for comedic relief. Uh, Bernie, I think his name was, he was, his material was terrible. The his guy. The black guy, yeah. Okay. His jokes never landed. Actually, it might, I might have chuckled at one or two. I heard a couple people chuckle. But uh, he was trying a little too hard. And every role I see him in, he never funny. It's usually the material they give him. No, Gerald said he was funny in one movie. What movie was that? Uh, Bullet Train. Yeah, he said he was. He had he had good material in Bullet Train. Outside of that, I haven't seen him. None of his stuff really works. Uh, what is his name? I got it written down somewhere. Brian Henry. That's his real name. The CGI is crazy. For I heard that the budget is lower for this movie than the other Godzilla films, which is insane because there are no dark shots. There's no more. There's no fighting in the dark. To hide the bad CGI. Everything is in the, the light and it's really good. Uh, coming from this movie though, they could definitely have a monster verse movie because there are times when there are no, there's no human communication and Kong, he's the star of the show and he communicates with other monkeys and stuff and other species and it comes off very well. They're able to tell the story without him actually being able to talk. And the music selection was very weird, especially with the uh, veterinarian dude. All his scenes were just him with his background music while he's doing some foolishness, helping either helping Kong out or helping the team out. And uh, they kept, the movie started with a classical song from like, I'm guessing like the 1960s. And then they just went from classical to 80s and 90s music. And then there was even a part with synthwave music. I don't know if you remember or could tell. I don't know what kind of music that is. Synthwave is like, synthwave is like cyberpunk, uh, the club music, the John Wick music. I don't know, you probably never Isn't seen like Guardians of the Galaxy music? No, that's the 80s and 90s stuff. Everybody wants to be Guardians of the Galaxy now. Yeah. And I don't know, because they did it sweet, they did it cool. And so everybody feels like they need to add millennial music. Uh, there's also a full-blown Honda ad. <laughs> I think it was a Honda. Volkswagen. Volkswagen. I couldn't believe it. This show, the movie is definitely self-conscious. It's silly. It doesn't care about the human stuff. And yes, they threw a whole ad in there. And it was. It actually caught me off guard. Oh yeah, I did want to touch on Godzilla being unhinged in this movie. We thought Godzilla cared about humans. But the theory is that Godzilla was so uh, worried about the threat in this movie. And the threat is not, it doesn't seem like it's a worthy threat for Godzilla and Kong. But uh, the threat in this movie, I feel like, had Godzilla a little bit unhinged. And he did not seem to care about human life as much. Kong definitely did. They kind of explained that in the movie. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. They surprisingly didn't spoil everything in the trailer. There was a lot more monster stuff. I tried to stay away from the trailers, but I watched the first one. The first one seemed like it was spoiling a lot, and they kept coming up. I kept seeing stuff on TikTok and Instagram trying to spoil me, and still, everything else I was not expecting in the movie. So they they still did save a lot, so expect to see a lot more outside of what the trailer showed you. Uh, there are a lot of explanation dumps in this movie, and some of them from characters that are not worthy or seem like they should be knowing what the heck is going on. There are no like real scientists in this, it seems like and everybody just kind of knows what's going on. The the girl, the little girl from the last movie, she's in here too, and is just a god in this. The human stuff is just foolishness. And uh, the last thing is the unsatisfactory ending because Scar King, he doesn't seem like a crazy threat to Godzilla or Kong. Yeah, so when they ended up defeating him, 
it just didn't seem very worth it but the fighting scenes and stuff still made up for it all right so for spoilers i want to start off with godzilla he was absolutely ridiculous and unhinged in this movie he did not care about humans he was killing people left and right in the first movie he even intentionally tries to dodge a bridge that has a bunch of humans on it but he's forced to walk through it once the humans start shooting at him in this one he was like intentionally killing humans he did not care he even <laughs> killed humans on that bridge those three bridges and they all fell down and then next thing you know, he dives under after. Like, he was just purposely trying to kill people. My cousin said it's he thinks it's because Godzilla was worried about the threat so much that he was juicing up this whole film. He lost weight. <laughs> he was killing a bunch of monsters. And so that made him a little crazy. I don't like it when they cut away from his kills. Like, he went to go fight that electric eel underwater, and they cut away from him. They did the same thing with Kong. And he was fighting that eel. <laughs> they both decided to fight an eel in the water. They cut away from both of those. I also like the little kid, the little baby ape that Kong has to work with. Yeah, uh, he wasn't annoying. And he was actually really helpful. And he was cute. Um, I do want to talk about Scar King. <laughs> and his, con his concubines. <laughs> Scar King is not a legitimate villain. He's just kind of there. He uses this pet that he controls, and that's what really gives him all his power. What did you think about Scar King? I mean, he wasn't that scary. It seems like the little, his inferiors could just leave anytime uh, they want. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, another they thing we talked about was... Forced to do anything. Yeah, they were slamming rocks and moving rocks in their little underground cave. It seemed like they could leave whenever they wanted to. But they weren't building anything. They were just moving rocks. Yeah, we don't know what the heck Scar King's operation was going on down there. <laughs> oh my goodness, it was so silly. And But I think, I don't know. I like the scene with Kong, though, when he comes down there. And they're able to communicate a story without any actual storytelling. You know, like any actual dialogue. And I think... It's a huge contrast in the way that they use the humans to tell the story because the humans were yapping too much. For example, this lady, the main character, the short-haired lady, I forget their names because they're all forgettable characters. She's reading the prophecy on the wall about how Godzilla uh, locked away the Scar King and all his people because they were doing evil things in the past. But there's not symbols or a language she's reading on the wall. She's straight up reading she's <laughs> pictures. Just she's just talking. She's, yeah, she's talking. She's reading pictures off of the wall, telling the entire lineage and story of Godzilla and how he trapped the Scar King. And then the Scar King is trapped in this cave where they can just leave, it seems like. It took nothing for them to leave. They also, I think he, what actually happened is that he trapped them so that they can't leave Hollow Earth. But they didn't communicate that well. If they couldn't leave Hollow Earth, remember when Scar King sent his little henchmen to go kill Kong? Yeah. And then he saw that portal. Oh, yeah, they had back. to discover the portal. He, but, I mean, they didn't go that far. And my thing is, like, if they were trapped there... For that long they, and didn't find anything. They that portal that fast. Yeah, that it's because they followed sense. Kong, but... They could have did a better job trying to get out of there. Even I don't know how long Kong, they were stuck. Even if they didn't have to follow Kong, they could have ventured out and they would have eventually found a portal and wouldn't been able to get out of there. Yeah. So, yeah, there were there were multiple yes. portals in there. Um, there's another scene where the black guy, Bernie, um, he just starts explaining how gravity works because he's, he's not even a scientist. He's a blogger and a conspiracy theorist. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just knew what the heck was going on with science in the portals and how stuff was <laughs> rationed together. Okay, let's talk about the cool stuff, though. Um, Godzilla vs. Kong again. That was sweet. I love that. First of all, Godzilla dives off this mountain. He does a dolphin dive after he gets juiced up and loses weight and his arms get longer. <laughs> he does a dolphin dive. That was probably one of the sweetest scenes of the entire movie. He does a dolphin dive. He swims, he swims to Kong, and then they start uh, fighting. Kong doesn't want to fight him, but he does get his get back a little bit. Uh, he was... It was so hype <laughs> watching Kong beat down on Godzilla. Even though Godzilla, of course, he has to win in the end because he's Godzilla. But that was satisfying. Uh, the only way he was able to keep up with him was because he got that arm, which got frostbitten by that monster that Scar King was controlling. 
And I got to talk about that for a second because that was also ridiculous. The little frostbite situation where... <laughs> so Kong gets frostbit in Scar King's little underground cave and his hand is hurt and it's really messed up. So the... the um, what is the guy? The veterinarian guy. Mm -hmm. He goes and he's like, oh... I've got this place where we got shut down because the government got involved, but we built this uh, arm extension for Kong and they put it on him and it magically has the juices needed to heal frostbite and it was really convenient. It's just a, it's just a little too cold how stuff really worked out. It was really convenient, but I, like I said, the movie was definitely self-conscious of what it was doing. They didn't care. They know people want to see the, uh, the, fighting. the fighting, the CGI, and the action. And they're trying to be like the old Godzilla movies. I haven't watched all of them, but the old Godzilla movies would eventually turn into the monster verse, and it was just a bunch of foolishness going on. I'm pretty sure everybody's seen that clip of Godzilla flying in the air and kicking another monster. Oh, yeah. Um, so my brother was sitting next to me, and this movie, this is this goes to show how bad the writing is. Um, there's a character, as a pilot. He was a, a douchebag, and... Uh, <laughs> My brother predicted he was going to die as soon as he heard him talk. He was like, oh, he's going to die because he's too much of a butthole. And that's it. literally what happened in the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, he's talking to Bernie, and Bernie's very annoying. And then he ends up just being dead immediately. And it was kind of uh, a waste of time. It also doesn't make sense how everybody was able to go on this mission. This little girl's able to go on this mission to talk to Kong. It's like it's so unlegitimate, illegitimate. Is that the right word? It's It's not serious. People are just able to hop on this trip to go to Hollow Earth. Why aren't people able to do this all the time? Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Almost done, Leah. One second. Almost, your torture is almost over, okay? Jesus okay. Christ. Gene, this is actually torture. I'm oh, no. You did you did pretty good the time you decided to talk. <laughs> so, yeah. If you're going to go see this movie, turn your brain off and just go for the fight scenes. Yes. Uh, the more serious movies, you know, are the Japanese ones. <laughs> oh, Hopefully we get... <laughs> If you're going to go see this movie, turn your brain off. Uh, this is not a serious movie. It's just go have fun. Try to ignore the human stuff as much as you can. Or just keep it with the plot, I guess. It doesn't really matter. The real movies are the Japanese ones. Uh, hopefully we get more Godzilla minus one. Obviously he's not as athletic and, you know, he can't do as much. That Those are definitely more story, story oriented. I said that right. Oriented. Story oriented. So yeah, I give this movie a solid 5 out of 10, strictly because the human stuff was bad and the monster stuff was good. What about you? I give it a 5 out of 10. Okay, so same thing, yeah. Just a solid movie, and uh, I hope you guys have fun watching it. I'll see you on the next review. Peace.